Hi, and welcome back to the Save It For Parts channel, where today we're taking a look at another obscure tech product. This is a marine computer, and I believe viewer Aaron sent this to me last year, so thank you again, Aaron. I'm sorry it took me this long to get around to it, but uh, when people send me stuff, I don't always have time to look at them right away. So this has been sitting on my to-do pile downstairs for a while. This is essentially a PC, but it's designed for marine applications. It's designed for a boat, so it has some specific things in it set up for uh, running chart systems, running navigation, integrating with things like onboard vessel systems, radars, communication. Um, I'm not exactly sure what it does or what kinds of features it has, but we're going to take a look at it and see if we can make it do anything. Now I come from a boating background, but I've never come across a vessel PC quite like this. Usually we just used an old laptop or something. Uh, this has a pretty minimalist front panel. We've just got a power button, we've got some USB ports, we've got a DVD drive, we've got this mysterious dongle port. I don't know what that does. Uh, this is just a removable filter, so you can pop this off and there's a little uh, piece of foam in there that you can clean to keep it from sucking in too much dust. Now it's supposed to be rack mounted, but I'm not entirely sure what kind of rack rails these are. Maybe some kind of a, uh, maybe something you'd find on a commercial vessel. Now the back is a little more interesting because there's a lot going on here. We've got um, the keyboard mouse over here, the old style keyboard and mouse. We've got multiple VGA. We've got multiple serial ports, four serial ports, so that's kind of cool audio, we've got more USB, and we've got, uh, it looks like, two LAN ports. And we also have this NMEA interface. This is kind of a standard interface for marine electronics, for things like autopilots, for radar, for depth sounders. So this should be able to integrate with a lot of uh, common uh, devices at, in your ship's wheelhouse or your pilot house. Got some info about it on the side, again the model number, and it looks like this is supposed to run embedded Windows XP. Now I'd like to see what's in here, I would especially like to see if it has some kind of a hard drive or other non-volatile storage other than the DVD drive. I don't know if there's going to be like a memory card or flash memory because it is embedded Windows XP, it's possible that there's no spinning metal hard drive. Now it does have these annoying star screws which means I had to pull out the security bit set to get into it. and. I've never liked these. Companies always put these in to make it just mildly harder to access your own equipment, and this wouldn't stop anybody at a repair shop on land from getting into the thing. It, it might keep you from getting into it if you're at sea, if you're out in the middle of the ocean, and all you have is a, a Phillips screwdriver, then you might not be able to fix your computer, which I guess is the idea of the company. They want you to call in for tech support, but um, again, being a, a having a commercial boating background, I know we could get past these with, uh, if you had to, with a hammer and a flathead screwdriver, so it might not be very pretty afterwards, but if you needed to get in here, you could get in here. All right, so under the hood here, we have a couple interesting things. It's a custom motherboard made by Transys, and it does have uh, SATA connectors, so it's fairly modern. Uh, this might be a memory or storage module here, this thing with the... Uh, little heat sink on top of it. And, uh, this is probably the processor with the bigger heat sink. You can kind of see there is another board hidden underneath this. We have another heat sink back here for the power supply, and this does use 24 volts DC, which is a little bit odd. I'm more used to small boats that use 12 volt DC, but I guess maybe on a big commercial ship you might have 24 readily available. In the back here we have that NMEA module, and it looks like that goes to um, to something kind of like an IDE cable here. I, I don't know if that's a custom bus or if that's... I don't know what that is. We might have to look into this a little more. Pretty interesting though. And speaking of IDE, there is one of those over here that goes down to the DVD drive. And I can see the DVD drive through these vents, so there doesn't seem to be too much else in the lower part of the case. I probably won't bother opening it up further at this point. I'm not seeing a hard drive, and I'm not seeing anywhere to put a hard drive. There are some extra cables for more drives, but there's no, um, there's no mounting rack, there's no sled, there's nowhere to put a traditional uh, spinning metal hard drive. And I have to admit, I'm a little concerned about this dongle port because that could be something like a security module that it needs to be able to boot or to run certain software. All right, this is turning into a very Save It For Parts collection here. So let me give you the quick tour. We have the wrong monitor. This is a VGA monitor, but it's supposed to be for like uh, a podium display, so it's a weird touch screen. We have the wrong power supply for that, uh, which is just this 12 volt brick, which also has the wrong uh, end on it, which is just taped together, so I'm gonna have to redo that a little bit with some better tape. 
We also have the wrong power supply for the computer because we just have a benchtop power supply for that uh, with some alligator clips going into the back here. So um, yeah, oh, also I'm using the wrong power down below because I've got uh, this guy uh, and I'm just using the uh, regular prongs here, not the ground prong because my extension cord doesn't have a uh, ground pin on it. So uh, don't do this at home. All right, we'll dial this thing in for 24 volt DC and let's fire this thing up. Well, it's certainly a noisy fan on it, and it looks like we're a Core Duo uh, 2.16 gigahertz. Not the oldest, not the newest. It looks like about 2007 or so. Boy, the uh, VGA sync is not happy with this monitor. Yeah, it's a weird aspect ratio. You don't get square monitors anymore, and I am getting a distinct hot electronic smell from the box here, so uh, hopefully it stays alive. We have uh, nothing on IDE other than that uh, CD-DVD drive. All right, I've got a flash drive for Q4OS, which is a Linux distribution that acts just like Windows XP. Let's see if it'll let me boot that. All right, it looks like Q4OS is loading. It's not finding any onboard storage, and I did look up that module in the front that I thought might be an SSD. I can't find anything about it. I, I don't see any numbers on it, and I did a Google image search of the thing, and I... I still can't find anything on it, so I might have to pull that out and try to figure out what is that. Well, I looked up a couple numbers on this thing, and it's an Eton ET866, which is apparently the video card, so uh, that's a new one to me. I guess it's, it's kind of like a laptop video card, but then with a giant heat sink on it, so um, yeah, not storage at all. Also, digging around in here a little more, you can tell it was probably used on a boat because it's kind of rusty. I have not seen that amount of rust inside of a computer case for a while. So I do have some surplus SSDs from another friend, uh, also named Gabe, who runs IO Flood. So these are leftovers from uh, his business. Uh, thank you again, Gabe. I will put uh, some links down to IO Flood in the description if you want to check out some of their services. I still can't get over how loud this fan is. I would not want that running in the wheelhouse of a boat. I guess in normal operation, you'd have it tucked away somewhere in a server closet or down underneath a console where you don't have to listen to the thing all day. So we'll dump Q4OS onto that SSD. And there we go, we have our beautiful Windows XP-like uh, Q4OS setup. We're getting some interesting errors here that I've never seen before. Our uh, sound server has a fatal error, the CPU is overloaded, so... Q4OS is supposed to be a low resource operating system, but apparently it has overloaded the CPU. Alright, I've hooked this up to the network so I can download some updates. I've been sitting here for about 20 minutes waiting for this desktop profiler to finish. This thing seems pretty sluggish, even compared to some relatively old computers that I've put Q4OS on in the past. I put one on a old cop car computer for one of my Cyberdeck projects, and I don't remember it being this slow to install and set things up. Whenever I film an old computer, somebody inevitably asks in the comments if it will play Doom. Technically, the sound even works, even though I had all those fatal errors with the processor overloading. I can't hear the sound over the fan noise, even with the headphones. So this Marine computer is pretty interesting, although I'm still trying to figure out an exact use for it. It is pretty cool that it has so many COM ports on the back. It has so many serial ports. Um, I could potentially use it to run some kind of satellite dish motor, some kind of sensor system. Uh, I could put it on a boat, although I don't have a large enough boat to really need something like this. I just have the... Uh, the small 16-foot jet boat, and uh, for the amount of power something like this would need, as well as all of the navigation suite and monitors and a radar and all that, I, I would probably just need to run that V8 engine on the jet boat constantly to keep all the electronics going, so that's not super efficient. So if anyone out there has suggestions for something I could do with this, I am definitely all ears. I would like to use it for something, although I'm a little hesitant to use it even in my server rack because it is so noisy. This is louder than my uh, current server. Anyway, I think we're going to wrap this one up. It was cool to look at the Transus RS6. This was just kind of a quick look at it, a uh, quick overview, and then trying to get it to boot. We got that done, and now I don't know what to do with the thing. So I'm going to put it back on my to-do pile. Maybe we'll come back to this in the future. If somebody has a really good idea for what to do with this thing, I, again, I'd love to hear about it. Let me know down in the comments. And as usual, thank you to everyone out there for watching, and we'll see you next time.